Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose dear Son, on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it into the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb the same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of, the, in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute just judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This is the day, this day shall be a day of remembrance from you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. Psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 116, verse 1, verses 10 through 17. We will say this in unison. 
I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night in which he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he gave, had given thanks, he broke it, and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet 
and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. If you have love for one another, the gospel of the Lord. And they will know we are Christians by our love. Please be seated. So by now, you all know my, uh, my fondness for Swanee. And I, I had already decided to tell a little Swanee story tonight to start before I knew the Rons would be back here. Tony's reading. I see other... Swanee parents and fans uh, in the crowd. Um, I, I had an amazing experience at Swanee, like a lot of uh, graduates of the School of Theology. Um, this isn't a surprise to Kristen. She knows I'm already planning my retirement uh, on the mountain, uh, if possible. We're all good Swanee School of Theology graduates like to, uh, to end up. Um, but as, as wonderful an experience as I had there, I have to say, and I think maybe some of the other Swanee fans here will back me up, um, it's a little bit of a bubble on top of the mountain. It's, uh, it's just this really special, wonderful, kind of magical feeling kind of place um, but at times, it feels a bit like a bubble. And I'm not saying that the students there never get out of that bubble, but I can tell you this. As I was getting close to finishing there, I remember uh, my peers and their spouses and fa- like lamenting having to leave the mountain. <laughs> and it's like, we came here to train to go off the mountain <laughs> to work. I had a little bit different experience because Kristen was... Uh, was still in Knoxville because we had a house there. So I got off the mountain quite a bit uh, into the real world. And some of my classes took me into the real world. And that's really what I want to focus on tonight is one class where we went to Chattanooga and we went to a place called the Community Kitchen in Chattanooga. And uh, I met this guy named uh, Ron Fender, Brother Ron. 
Brother Ron was an Episcopal monk. Did you know there are Episcopal monks and nuns? Yes, there are, there are monastic orders in the Episcopal Church. He was with the, uh, the Brotherhood of St. Gregory, I believe. And Ron was one of these like larger-than-life figures. So literally, he was a big dude. <laughs> but he had this big personality. And I remember, every time I saw him, he was in overalls and like a work shirt, flannel shirt kind of thing. So he spent most of his time working at the community kitchen in Chattanooga. Now this is a place that provides uh, a whole range of services for the homeless, okay? From meals to clothing to shelter, um, education, job training, drug treatment. I mean, this whole, whole array of services, and that's where Brother Ron worked. And I will also never forget the fact that Brother Ron uh, would conduct funerals for the homeless of Chattanooga who had no one in their life. And in some case, he was the one there doing the funeral for this person. Ron took tonight's gospel very seriously. Here's how seriously. (laughs) It started in a supply closet where he kept socks and shoes for the homeless folks. And as he became more engaged in this work, he, he realized, he learned, you may know this, that many of the medical issues that the homeless face begin in their feet. They spend so much time on their feet, and oftentimes they don't have proper footwear. So he began doing that. And here's the other thing he did, (laughs) y'all. He washed their feet. He washed their feet and clipped their toenails. And I will never forget hearing the story of the the man who, through tears, after Ron had finished doing this, this big, huge man had just finished clipping the toenails and washing the feet of this homeless person, an older gentleman who said, this is the first time in my life that someone has touched me in a non-threatening way. And they will know we are Christians by our love. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet... You also ought to wash one another's feet, for I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. There are a number of things amazing about this. One one is that Jesus is literally gathering with some dudes who he knew were going to do him wrong. (laughs) He knew one of them would betray him. He knew one of them would deny knowing him, and yet he still goes through with this. And now this is, um, we wash our hands. (laughs) That's what we do. In this culture, you walk dirty roads. You walk dusty roads. You got to a place, you know what? You wash your feet. And when you went to someone's house, kind of a sign of hospitality was for, let us wash your feet for you. Now, the host, you all, would not wash the feet. Typically, there would be someone at the house, a servant, someone a little bit farther down on the social ladder, whose task that would be. You wash the feet of the guest. Right, so it wasn't the washing of the feet that freaked these guys out, like it kind of does us, for being honest. 
It was the fact that Jesus would do that for them. That Jesus would humble himself in such a way. And I find it fascinating. You know, you could probably think, like, some people are never like famous last words, famous last actions. This is it. This is the last time this group will be together. And he does two main things. One is the centerpiece of what we do when we worship, when we gather at the table. He institutes the Eucharist, communion. Right? He transforms the Jewish Passover into our, what we call Eucharist, Holy Communion. That's the one thing. But the other thing he does, you all, is this example, this action of such great humility. I can't imagine being called to do what my friend Ron was called to do. I don't think we're all called to that kind of work. I really don't. But we're called to something. We're called to humble ourselves and to give of ourselves somehow and some way to others as Jesus modeled for us. The more I've thought about my experience with Swanee, the more I realize that that bubble isn't just at Swanee. That bubble's everywhere. I have my own bubble, and you have your own bubble. That's very, very comfortable. And Jesus challenges us to get outside of that, at least every once in a while. And in humility and in compassion and in love, share something with someone else. And they will know we are Christians by our love. Amen. Before I read uh, what is written in your bulletin, which is kind of the formal introduction to foot washing, let me explain uh, how this will work logistically. If you choose to participate, again, this is a choice. Um, We're going to move the chairs over. Uh, There is warmish water in those pitchers, so you know. We'll, we'll place uh, kind of a towel in front of the, of the chair and a bowl, and you're invited to come forward, and you just shoes and socks off at your pew, come up. Um, you pour a little water over someone who's sitting here, it's over their feet, and take, uh, we've got some little cloths here that you can just dry them off with, okay? That's, that's how it works. I think it's been a few years since maybe we've done this here, so it's back. (laughs) You are invited to participate as you feel called to do. Fellow servants of our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night before his death, Jesus set an example for his disciples by washing their feet, an act of humble service. He taught that strength and growth in the life of the kingdom of God can come not by power, authority, or even miracle, but by such lowly service. Therefore, I invite you who share in the royal priesthood of Christ to come forward that we may recall whose servant we are by following the example of our master. Come remembering his admonition that what will be done for us is also to be done by us to others. For a servant is not greater than his master, nor is one who is sent greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them.
Lord, have mercy. 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 Have mercy. In the communion and flourish and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another in all our lives to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord our God. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will. And those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will, walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Stand. Share with one another a sign of God's peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace, Tony. Peace. Please be seated. Good evening. It's good to see you all here. Uh, Anyone watching, hello to you out there, wherever you may be. Um, Glad you're with us this evening. Uh, We have two services tomorrow as we continue uh, in these last few days before Easter Sunday. Two services tomorrow at noon and 6 p.m. Flowering of the church on Saturday morning at 10 and then three Easter Sunday services for you to choose from, 7.30, 9, uh, and at 9, we will flower the cross, so be sure if you come to the 9 o'clock, bring some flowers for that cross, Uh, and then at 11 o'clock, that'll be our final service on Easter Sunday with incense. Non, uh, what's the word, not high, uh, what's that? There you go. Yes, so... But I know, still, just fair warning that there's going to be incense at that. So hopefully you can make it to one of those services on Easter Sunday. But it's uh, certainly good to see you this evening. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you had made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it 
gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the Blessed Virgin Mary, George, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all persons. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit and the blessing of God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, be with you now and evermore. Amen.